Good morning, everybody. Yeah. Good morning. How are we doing this Monday? Are we are we fired up for the week? Are we tired or? We're ready. We're ready. Michael's in the house. Great. Ron's here. Bobby's here. Marlene. Hello, Kathleen. Happy Monday. Hi, Alex. Good morning. Yeah, so Rob actually is going to be at a, a parent-teacher interview this morning. He asked me to help out and uh, help run the meeting today. So look forward to connecting with you guys here. Um, we'll give a few more minutes for other people to log on before we get started. But uh, Ron, if you don't mind, I'm going to put you on the spot. How's uh, what's, what's new and exciting in your world right now? More listings. That's good. Now I get more listings. I don't know if anybody else is uh, having that issue, but it's, it's pretty dry here in South Florida. All so right. we're, we're doing our best. Are you, uh, are you like uh, really outbound marketing? Like, are you trying to get new business? Or are you working the sphere of influence that you have? Um, new business, past clients, mainly past clients. That's that's where we get most of our information from. And then my son does a lot of prospecting. He does fires and just does cold caller. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, have you ever tried prospecting landlords to turn them into listings? We have. Uh, we have. We did it a few times, but never really got uh, too much going with it. But it's something that uh, we have to consider doing again too. And that's quick yeah. money if you can get a listing like that. I remember when I was. Uh, must have been 20 years old and uh, just starting out the business. And my mentor at the time, he had been in the business for 20 years already, still selling real estate. I think it's uh, 40 years now. Um, and uh, I was in a little small basement suite. My wife was pregnant and I needed some listings. And so he said, well, just go into the newspaper and just start calling landlords and just tell them, you know, seeing how exciting the market's been lately, have they considered selling the revenue properties? Yeah. And I got one. Yeah, and I and I got a chance to double end it too. So that was uh, really cool. I mean, there's always there's always opportunity. How's your market up there in? Uh, where are you, Toronto? Or... I'm on the west coast. I'm in in Victoria. So it's uh, very much. I think the markets are very similar across North America right now. You know, inventory slowly rising, sales volumes kind of meh. The prices are kind of flatlined. They're not really dipping more than 10 or 15 percent yeah right on so i think this is uh we'll just get going here so um rob gave me a bit of an itinerary guys and i've got some things to talk about as well i love uh more participation it always makes it better when we do these calls uh one of the questions is are we uh do we have a mission statement for our teams? You know, what's, what's the mantra when we come together in our team meetings each week? Um, do we, do we know what we're doing? Does, does our team know what we stand for? You know, and um, it can be as simple as what Ron said. It's, it's getting more listings. You know, if that's, if that's the mantra, then, uh, then you need to support them in that mantra. And uh, so if you've got, a mission statement that's geared towards getting more business, then you need to provide the tools and and the uh, the system to be able to execute. And it has to be super easy. You know, I'm a big believer in systems because with systems you can have average people do extraordinary things. And uh, following a little bit of that McDonald's model, it's like you put in like an infrastructure and a program, and it makes millions of dollars. You know. And if we can, if we can strive to do that, if, if some of our teams here have younger agents that haven't been in the business for a while, well, we need to build up a nice structure so they can't make too many mistakes and, and, uh, and not be able to get that success that, uh, that they joined the team for. So does anybody have any thoughts on a uh, mission statement or, or what your, uh, what your goals are for the, uh, for the team? Is, is that, is that clear in your guys' organizations? Yeah, we try to um, we're trying to change it up a little bit from last year. 
Um, as our market's gotten tighter here, so we have to try and experiment with different uh, types of uh, prospecting methods. Um, we're, uh, we have a pretty good uh, plan for 2025. Well, we're starting it now, but uh, our mail campaign and um, and all our print media is, is going out first of the year. And we're doing one, one more mailing before the <laughs> end of the year. Nice. Good. Anybody else? Mr. Baker? Yeah, I'm, we're, um, I mean, I, you don't know my background, but I am a ex corporate, um, self uh, uh, admitted hater of mission statements, but I do have a philosophy statement sure. <laughs> because I always felt like they, the mission statements got put on a shelf right after they were written and no one ever looked back at them. Right. Um, so we, uh, and I, I, I say that we demonstrate it. So we have daily team calls, um, and on every single call, there's a piece of it that's embedded within the call. Um, and ours is really quite straightforward. It's, uh, no surprises ever is our motto and we put it on all of our marketing materials. So the old is, if you got surprised, we screwed up. Um, if you had to call us, we screwed up. If we, so we should be calling you that type of thing. Uh, zero tolerance for any questionable ethics, always do the right thing. Digital uses a competitive advantage to exceed client expectations. Um, always provide value before requesting anything from anyone. Love it, man. That's awesome. Great. Anybody else? I'm going to pick on the people that are showing their faces, unfortunately, but because uh, I know that they're there. How about David? Do you have anything there, David? I've never been, honestly, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. I've never really been one for mission statements either. Uh, I think a lot of people have these statements. They go on um, mail outs. They go on uh <clears throat> they go on email signatures the the team reads it but i i don't see anybody in south florida that i know consistently use it and and uh it does something i i guess it could be a good idea for some people uh but in our market i mean i've never really stayed with one mission statement things change daily uh for what you want your team to do how they want to operate i mean communicating uh our value to each client is is what we do on the first call i mean so just, I mean, I like Baker. We talk pretty much every day on a call, at least once we have a group chat. We, we know we're all on the same page. So, yeah. That's, and that's it. The, the mission statement is, it's not so much for the public. It's just, you know, bringing the team together, right? We're just talking about when we're getting together, you know, how do we separate like from people saying, well, they, well, they want to know you're part of the hauler group or, or obviously, you know, when we're talking about setting up um, our systems, you know, it's just reinforcing more about what we stand for. And I think like Baker was talking like that stuff's perfect, right? Like it's, it's something that kind of brings everybody back to center and, uh, and you're focusing on the things that are, um, you're focusing on the things that, that matter to you. And then you're reinstilling that back into your group because when you're not there, are they representing you? I guess that's kind of the big question. Are they are they representing your team well, right? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Alex, I, I'll, I'll say that I think that the key too is um, living by it, right? So a lot of people will go, oh, well, that person just did that that one time. And like I had someone who did something that was completely, it wasn't against the code of ethics, but it was completely against how we operate as a team. And I asked them to leave the team. I demonstrated it by showing that there's zero tolerance to it. And the folks on the team, it's not, I'm not quick to do that type of stuff, but it was that offensive to everything that we talk about every day that I just basically said, you got to go somewhere else. It's just not a good fit. Um, and I think that you have to lead that way, right? You have to demonstrate that you truly believe in those policies and ethics and the things that you're preaching. And there is no gray matter there. It's black and white, very honestly. <laughs> Love it. Fantastic. Anybody else want to take a stab at it? An opinion? Awesome. So, you know, our business is built on relationships. It's built on, you know, you know, our sphere of influences. Obviously, if we're outbound marketing, we're increasing our sphere of influences by adding to them. Um, what's the magic number that you're asking your team agents on a daily basis to talk to someone new or to talk to someone that they already know? Like, what's the, do you guys have, a structure in place that kind of hold them accountable from how many outreaches 
or are we just like kind of just telling them that it's a good idea? Does anybody have a we, go ahead? We do. We have specific numbers for each person based on their goal. So whatever their numeric value is, I can deduce it down to the conversations they have to have. And for a conversation to be considered valid, it has to be over three minutes. So I don't I don't give them credit for anything under three minutes. <laughs> Fantastic. Bobby, was, was uh, Baker funny or are you laughing at something else? No, I, I, I'm a big fan of uh, Chief Baker. So, uh, and I apologize. I thought I was on mute there, but I, I, I just think it's amazing what he does and to hold people accountable for a, a conversation and has it down to the minute. I think that's fantastic. For sure. Anybody else find it important or what's the quota? Do we have a quota? Does anybody have a quota? How many, how many contacts a day? How many contacts a week? I asked my team to reach out to three new contacts a day. Fantastic. Are we, are we watching them do that? Or are we just trusting the process? No, they're uh, constantly reminded on the pretty much once a week, but they need to do better holding them accountable. Right. It's the uh, it's the hardest part. Yeah, play is the accountability is the hardest part, but it's the best part. It's the part that we can measure, and you know, when we go to bed at night and we have our overhead because we're investing into a team, we want to know that our investment's going to come back. Well, we need to see some like receipts, and and a form of you know accountability is a receipt for us to to sleep better at night, knowing that we're not just throwing money at the wall and. You know, for some of us that have been team leaders for a while, you know what I'm talking about, where, you know, if um, if you just leave it up to them to do it, just they're on a team for the reason, right? Like they're not typically the most motivated, you know, they're typically not leaders. I mean, I'm not saying they can't be and I'm not saying they won't be, but they join a team because they're looking for leadership. They're looking for mentorship. And so that's one of the things that we need to really like zone in on is. What, what can I do to offer them value and to get a return on my investment? And I need to see a receipt. Like I need to see if I invest this much time, this much money, I'm going to get this return on my investment. So just a reminder, guys, like the greatest gift that we can offer our agents on our team and in the brokerage is accountability. Brand, second, you know, front desk, third, like, those are things that are important to them that they think that is important to them. The greatest thing that we can offer them is accountability. And there's ways to be, uh, you know, good at doing it. There's ways that you can be an asshole. And I think that you should take the good approach and, and be positive. Um, but of course, at the end of the day, if they're not willing to follow the, 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 the goals of the team, or if they're not willing to follow their own personal goals, then they need to really look at themselves and see if, you know, if this is the right business for them. You know, um, this is not a job. This is, this is a career that requires, you know, a constant attention to it. So, you know, sometimes we have to be tough. And uh, I find that like Chief Baker says, you know, if you can make an example of someone, it helps level up the rest of the group, right? Because now they're looking to how you're dealing with a, a problem situation. And if you let that problem keep going, even if it's family, like if it's one of your your, your kids, and they're not doing what they need to be doing, but everyone else is expected to be doing what you say. Well, we need to we need to step up, you know. Like, there's not a that like everyone is looking at what everyone else is doing. And if you favor someone else in your team, it will uh, it'll come out in different ways. And and I just uh, I just totally want to double down on the accountability thing because um, we're moving into a you know. Q4 here, Q4 and Q1, typically slower times of year in Canada, uh, probably slower for you guys as well in Q4. Well, this is the time of year that seed planting is essential. And we're, we're out there planting seeds. And if these guys are not planting seeds and the spring, spring summer markets come and, and our busy Q1, Q2 start to, start to uh, bring in fruit and they're not doing deals, it's because they weren't doing the work before. And, uh, so let's try to get these. It's a lot. It's like that, you know, you got to love your kids through it. This is a love discipline thing. We got to, we got to help get them back on track. Oh, Alex. And, uh, 
Get Alex, I think, I, I, you know, um, I, I'm a morning person and I, I like to like listen to podcasts and, and, you know, watch things to fill my brain with um, uh, inspirational or valuable content. And what's interesting is, you know, you, you go back many, many years ago, the business fundamentals haven't changed, right? The, um, the, the t- techniques and the tactics have changed, but the fundamentals haven't. So, you know, what we basically need to do is we need to find ways to talk to people, whether it's through social media, the phone, whatever, find out who needs our services, right? And be able to have a, uh, a conversation or or a uh, presentation when we meet with people that identifies the value, sets the expectations, right? We need to have the skills to get commitments and contracts signed both at, you know, the appointment, if we're talking to a homeowner or um, now a buyer in this market, we need to have the ability ne- to negotiate agreements for our, our sellers and buyers. And um, uh, we need to follow through on our commitments, right? <laughs> and we just do those five things, you know, 50 years ago it was the same thing, just that the, the techniques for doing it was very different. Right. So, but if we're not having, if we're not identifying people that we can serve, then what are we doing? Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and there's always been that, that resistance and, you know, caring is um, leading, showing them and holding them accountable and helping them develop their skills. Because if you go on a lot of appointments, but you have no skills, you're going to have, you know, learned failure, right? Right. And actually, it's a good point you make, Rob, because, you know, you have to obviously earn that that trust for you to be able to speak into their lives. And when you're correcting them, you got to have a foundation that they know that you do truly care about their goals and that you, uh, you don't just want to sell more houses. You want to make sure that we're meeting the team's goals and their personal goals and uh and when 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 you have that buy-in you get that uh privilege to be able to speak and correct them you know you can't just correct them without relationship and so i think that's a really really important piece and the one way to show that is obviously by investing in what their why is and what their goals are and uh and, and let's make an effort in december to like really like reset ourselves and and try to dig into what why are they in the business like what what would they love to accomplish next year? And if you can align their why with your personal financial goal, uh, you'll find that to be a, a much better success than just winging it, okay? The other thing I wanted to mention uh, is, um, are, you, are you going on listing presentations with your, with your agents? Like, are you, are you helping with the contracts? I think it's super important, especially for, for some that don't take on a lot of listings that you go to those meetings with them, it saves you money in the long run. It saves them money in the long run because you'll get a better price. Most likely Um, the customer will have a better experience because they'll feel like there's a lot more attention to their file and your agent's not wasting their time as much on deals that are going to take forever. You know, if we price it sharply and things do sell quickly and then they go and help their client buy a house, and that process happens faster than if you let them do it by themselves. Their confidence levels are growing. Their momentum is getting started. And then their tone and how they conduct themselves in the business becomes more uh, profitable. You know, like when we're doing deals and we have momentum and we get on the phone, our calls are stronger. You know, our, our convictions are stronger. And like most of us that are on this, this call today, are pretty confident what they do on a daily basis. You know what you need to do every single day. And when you get on the phone, it doesn't take us very much time to close an appointment because we have conviction. We know the business really well. And so don't underestimate the value that you bring to your team by just being there. You don't need to read, you know, books to them. You just need to show them and, uh, and help them get those commissions faster. So they can go back to their, their spouses and their, and their family and, and be excited about the business and, uh, and find victory. And that'll, that'll help them stick with you longer too. They'll remember those moments when they, when they had a, a, a tough couple of months and you were there to give them a bit of a lay down deal, or you help them put a deal through the goal line and they realized, you know what, I could really, really benefit by staying on Ron's team a little longer. You know, like he was there for me when I needed 
help and uh and he made his goals my goals and uh and we got successful that way so that's so really I, I, want to, I want i want to interrupt you for just a, a moment because i want to share with you how timeless a lot of these principles are right because we think technology changes stuff we think that you know our unique circumstance is special oh it doesn't work in a high-end market this market here is uber competitive people do this um I want to, there are two, two things that I remember. One was, um, I'm watching, you know, YouTube gives me a lot of suggested content. And, you know, when I'm drinking my morning coffee, planning out my week, I listen to whatever it suggests. And it's been putting a lot of old, um, I'll call it vintage Mike Ferry in front of me. And what it reminds me of is what he talked about 12 years ago, what he talked about 22 years ago is the same today. It's like the content, it, it speaks to me the same way. And when you keep repeating things to your team members, um, they hear it differently at different points of their career. Okay, he interviewed, he interviewed one individual who um, went through the journey of being on a team, you know, and he started coaching with Mike Ferry, you know, 25 years ago. You know, five years later, he went on his own. And then five years after that, you know, he basically built a team, not a traditional team like we all have here, but his team was a buyer's agent and admin. And he said, although the content doesn't change, my situation is different, so I process it in a different manner. That's why it's more relevant to hear it again and again. So you hear the same words, and you're in a different stage of your life and career, it has different meaning. Um but there's, I, I believe this guy might be the um, heir apparent to the Mike Ferry organization. This guy, I think it's Tony Smith. So 23 years ago, he did an interview with Mike Ferry, or Mike Ferry did a, um, a Mike Ferry TV, um, which wasn't on YouTube yet. It was the old uh, satellite TV. And he did a, uh, a conversation, the 12 deadly sins of prospecting. And then... I don't know, nine years ago or 10 years ago, he interviewed the guy, um, Tony Smith. And he said, you know, tell me like, you know, what's, yeah. what is like your mantra? What's most important to you? And he says, I have a copy of the 12 deadly sins. And, you know, Mike goes, well, what, what is that? He's like, well, you did that, you know, 11, 12 years ago. And he's like, I, I vaguely remember that, but he started to talk about it again. And there's different ways that these, deadly sins impact us and there are different threats right now and i think the threat we have right now is that we are so accessible right you're getting whatsapp you know all these notifications that just disturb you right that it's hard to stay focused it's like when we're in the office and you know everybody used to come and ask you a question right that was the disruption 20 years ago now our own disruption is right here we're always on call, right? Like, uh, uh, you know, you're going to be sitting here and you're getting these notifications coming in. And half of us are like only half hearing what's happening. So these these 12 deadly sins from, I guess it's 22 years ago or significantly more than 20 years ago are not prospecting when you should, right? Not blocking out the time, um, not spending the time allotted to prospecting. And um, what he talked about there was the interruptions right and those interruptions weren't digital back then those were like human interruptions right because we didn't even have an iphone then um not using the right scripts right and and i don't mean read a script right not like reading a teleprompter i mean knowing you know exactly how you're going to respond to questions or an objections and right. the most amazing thing is when you get surprised by an objection I get surprised when I don't get an objection, right? A lot of us get surprised by an objection and it throws us off. Mm -hmm. um, accepting a no when a yes is still a possibility. I know we all implicitly know this, but you, you, you walk into, you know, 20 years ago, you walk into a department store and the salesperson comes, Alex, may I help you? What's your, what's your instinctual response, right? What's your reflex response? No, I'm good. I'm just looking, right? Yeah. Right. So, so we need to not accept the reflex no. Um, we need to avoid stopping at the third or fourth question, right? We need to keep 
uh, moving on, moving the conversation, right? And um, this was like 20 years ago, and I listened to his script about door knocking, and it was almost exactly like mine. Maybe I heard it when I was sleeping, and that's how I morphed it, or maybe I just developed it because it makes good sense. But like questions like, hey, you know, wh what attracted you to buy here in uh, Victoria, Alex? You know, um, where were you before? Like you, you have these conversations that builds relationship value, um, and that's just in any conversation. Um Avoiding interruptions, throwing you off track, um, not remaining focused as you make your calls and contacts, um, not using your energy and enthusiasm to persuade, um, letting one conversation with one person defeat you mentally, right? That's a big one. Letting one conversation with somebody defeat you mentally, you, somebody, you know, rips you a new you know what because you call them at a bad time and then you put your head down you stop calling you can't like that just that just can't be part of our dna in this business um forgetting that only one yes is all it takes to make a successful prospecting session if you get one transaction a day that's a home run that's all it takes so if you go through 11 no's, and when you're talking to people, you know, if one out of 20 people have an immediate real estate need, that means you're going to get 19 no's when you're talking to just the general, the general public, right? So you have to, you have to be comfortable with the math. Um, um, stopping your prospecting on a sour note. OK, you, you know, if you stop on a sour note, when you start the next day, you're going to be on a sour note. When you stop on a sour note, it ruins your day. Why are we going to let somebody else influence our ability to help others or how we. How we feel emotionally ourselves, because the way you feel, you know, it, it impacts a lot of people and impacts, you know, for as a team leader, impacts everybody on your team. You know, as a as a as a person, it impacts everybody that's in your family life, right? You come home and you had a, a shitty day. You're a different person than when, you know, things went well. Um, it impacts your existing clients. It impacts the conversations that you have, right? And um, um, number twelve was starting your day, knowing that, you know, one through 11 on this list are not a problem for you. Start every day with it, you know, a fresh start, right? Because there will be, there will be challenges, there will be issues, and you can't let that get into your, your brain. I, I'm going to use the example of um, Aaron Judge, the best baseball player, right, in the league. But was he the best baseball player in the World Series? No, right? And I think what happened was, he got into a slump, right? Maybe, maybe the first, maybe it was the playoffs. Maybe the first game he was off. He let that influence the second game and the next game and the next game. But was was he any different than the person that you know absolutely crushed it during the season? No, he wasn't. He just let that he let the monkey get to his head. So and there are certain things that we need to do in this business. And we need to convey to our team members so that we can help as many people as possible. Because, you know, with the integrity that we have, and, and integrity is another thing. Uh, my coach talks about integrity not only as, hey, do you have integrity like you won't steal, but do you have integrity and you, you do what you say you're going to do. Okay. So if I talk to you, Alex, I say, hey, Alex, you know, being part of the, the Baker team, this is what we do. You know, I'd like you to have you know, five, three minute conversations every day. Is that what it is, Glenn, five? I uh, know it's, it's set by each and every person, by their goal. So you have a separate one, but, but what, whatever that is, integrity is doing what they do for them to do what they say they're going to do, right? Yep. And, you, you know, no surprises. A surprise is, you know, you tell me you're going to do one thing and then you do something else, right? And we all have, we all have excuses and reasons but that still doesn't take away the fact that you lack integrity. 
when you don't do it. Yeah. Right. So, um, you know, I think as, as we turn the calendar and as we try to be, you know, better individuals in our own lives and better team leaders, you know, we need to focus on, you know, what is this business really about? Okay. The fundamentals are the same. The technology is different, but eventually we need to get to the point of, you know, talking to people, right? We need to find out whether they want to buy or sell and if we can help them. We need to be able to um, have a conversation to procure written agreements, a listing agreement, a buyer agreement. Um, we need to be able to share with them a very um, solid strategy for how we're going to succeed. We need to demonstrate that we can perform by getting a contract signed. If you're a buyer, I get you, you the the seller's agent to persuade the seller to sign my agreement, right? And the word persuade is not a bad thing. Okay, we need to persuade people that it's in their best interest to work with our clients. Okay, and then we need to execute on our commitment, which is you know, in Glenn's case, no surprises, right? Here's what we said we're going to do. We do what we say we're going to do. If there's a problem, this is not like a game where you have to call and say, hey, Glenn, uh, is there a problem with the appraisal? No, at, at the Morris agent team, we're calling up and saying, hey, the buyer, uh, the buyer's appraisal came in low. Let's start to address how we're going to deal with that. Do we want to hold the line? Do we want to offer something? Do we want to offer to pay for another like those are the things that I think that you're talking about, Glenn. Like you, you have issues, right? But you always address them pro, um, proactively, correct? Correct. I mean, being that you're all put together and you have this master plan, the universe still invades your master plan, right? Every day. And you still have less than professional agents on other sides of transactions. You have emotionally charged, irrational people that are in the process, right? Yeah, you, you have ridiculous home inspections that, you know, competitors produce to your um, sellers saying they want unreasonable concessions. You have incompetent counsel. You have um, less than qualified lenders in, involved in the process on other sides. So all these things still happen at the Morris agent team, but there still can be no surprises, right? Because this, the lack of surprise is like, hey, here's the here's the process and here's how we handle it. And this is why you choose to hire us. Yeah. Yep. So I, I'm very, I'm very passionate about my beliefs here. And I think sometimes we get too complicated. I mean, our business is basically talking to people, finding out who we can serve, you know, having a value um, proposition when we meet to get agreement signed. Um, having the ability to then take that listing or buyer agreement and get a buyer and seller agreement signed behind it, right? And then execute on everything that we said we're going to do that's in our control. That's that's it in a nutshell. How you go about getting it is different. And, um, you know, Mike Ferry talked about, like, some people can be lazy and buy leads through portals and whatnot. But he said, you look at those people and they're still afraid to call those leads that they paid for. It doesn't change the process. You're better off just, you know, calling the people that you know or, or calling random prospects. And it made a lot of sense to me because a lot of times you're calling these people that came in through Zillow, Realtor, Ojo, whatever, and you're paying a lot of money and you're not necessarily getting the outcome. It's like they're rarely calling you, right? Even if they do call you, you still need to follow up. And a lot of times they do what? They ghost us. So well, I didn't realize we're over time, but um, I look forward to picking up on this next week. Um, as you can see, I'm very, um, I'm very charged about trying to help everybody with this process and commit it to um, the simple process of talking to more people, serving more um, clients you know, um, having structure. Rob, I need two minutes. Sure you do. Go ahead. I need two minutes. Thanks, guys. Sorry to keep you past uh, nine o'clock. 
Um, starting in January, we're kicking off the Path to Platinum program. Uh, Rob and I worked on it over the weekend, and we want to uh, ask the team leaders for their support. Uh, essentially, it's what we're talking about. It's about holding our team accountable, making sure they're doing the minimum required activities, helping them through scripts, and uh, and celebrating their victories, and and then correcting the things that they need to work on. And so it's a uh, it's going to be a three day a week commitment for seven weeks. It's an hour a day kind of thing. And uh, if uh, if you can participate as a team leader, we're going to break it up into groups for people to uh, to be able to uh, work together. And so if you already have a national team, then that's that's great. We might add a few people to it, but the goal is to be able to track our numbers and then combine them together, give the score to the to the the uh, instructor. And uh, each week we're going to tally that score up and we do have some awesome prizes at the end. For those that step up as team leaders, we're offering a trip for the winning team after the seven week program. So if you're in New York, we're gonna send you to Scottsdale. And if you're everywhere else, we might send you to New York, depending on what you want. Um, but that's something that we wanted to do. We wanted to incentivize the team leaders to obviously uh, give their time. Cause squad we're gonna... leaders, squad leaders. Well, yeah, well, yes, exactly. Squad leaders. So you don't have to be a team leader to be a squad leader, but we're really going to look to you guys as, as leaders in the group. Uh, it's a natural for us to ask because that's what you already are doing. And so Mondays will be a, you know, a, a talking point. It'll be a kickoff for the week. Wednesday, Wednesdays we'll be doing phone training. So that'll be live. So we'll have an instructor on the phone making dials. So we encourage that your team comes on to that call watch how we navigate through making some cold calls or or warm calls whatever we decide that week and friday will be the check-in with your numbers and see how everybody's doing and as we get those numbers we bring them over into the following week we celebrate uh, the the week previous and we focus on the week ahead and it's just getting people into the rhythm that uh, that we're all about right is finding that momentum and sticking to making good habits so We'll have more details in the weeks to come, but I did want to just give that little burst. We're going to send out an email today to the entire network of the Remax Select family, and that'll have a bit more detail in it. And uh, yeah, just stay tuned. We'll be talking about it regularly. It's just uh, it's just a culture that we want to build on. We want to build on prospecting, and we want to build on tracking, and we want to build on helping people reach their goals. So I'm excited. And hope you guys are as well. And Alex, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this thought because this will be in the beginning of next week's uh, session. Is I believe that anybody that's gonna work full time in this business, you know, should be earning 100% club or higher. Okay, I this is this is a fundamental because if you're not earning 100% club, you have expenses, right? Making you the know, money. You cannot live. You cannot live the life that I think somebody deserves to live by by being in this business. And I think by copying others, even without having, you know, extraordinary skills, you should be able to take that path to platinum by doing these activities. And I really, really, really believe that if you do these activities and you commit to it, it's not easy. Like if you don't have an interest in the business, maybe you can never make it right. If you're just like, this is a job for me, I'm going through the motions, probably not the industry for you, especially at this time. But if you are committed to this business and you're like Alex, Glenn, me, Dan, like everybody on this call is committed to this business, you want to you want to up your game and you want to deliver higher service Then everybody around us like attracts like everybody around us should be at least 100 percent club and should be on the path to platinum. And I truly believe that and I will do whatever I have to do personally to help them get to that point. And that's my commitment to everybody on this call and everybody in the organization. If you want to do the work, I will help you get there. But you have to give a shit and you have to have passion and you have to be excited about what you're doing. That's the wrap, guys and ladies. Excited for everybody to get involved. Appreciate it, Rob. Have a great Just a week, quick guys. reminder, guys. Yeah. One quick reminder that uh, Remax launched uh, registration for R4. Uh, I want uh, our brokerage to, to show up in, in numbers. Uh, we'll be there. Uh, we're talking about what we're going to do as a group right now. And uh, I hope to see you all there. Uh, room blocks are available. You can also book at the Delano that's connected to 
the Mandalay Bay. If you have any questions about R4, if you've never been, reach out to Alex or I, and we uh, will talk to you guys. Hey, All right, David, have a good one. David, yeah. let me give you five minutes on, David, I want to give you five minutes on next week's session to talk about what we, we are doing at the R4 and how we're going to leverage our size, okay? Yep. So remind me to get prepared for that for next week. Thank right, you, talk everybody. To you later, Rob, I have one more thing. Rob, one more thing. All right, um, guys, Glenn. I, I think that we have our annual planning pretty dialed in, and uh, and it's hard to understand what I'm saying with stats unless you actually see it. Uh, I'd like to, I checked while we were on the call, uh, Forrest, who is a part-time agent of mine, we have his planning session at 430, and he said it's fine to bring it up on video, and folks can watch us actually do one of our annual planning sessions. So if anyone wants to, they're more than welcome to join. Just drop me a text or an email, and I'll put you on the invite for the video, and you can see how we do annual planning. I love if it. you could, yeah. uh, if you could record that, that'd be great. Cause I have three part-time agents that two of them would love to be full-time if they could do the things they need to be doing. So yeah, I I think most of, there, but and also worry. most of this group was down in Maryland and they saw me give a book away to somebody. And, um, he did not send me all of his videos, but I follow up with him incessantly. And he said, I understand accountability now. <laughs> oh, good. So, yeah, it's funny. Awesome. All right. So, so uh, Glenn, are, are you uh, are you okay recording that or no? Yeah, I can record it. Cool. All right. Sounds, if sounds you gotta, great. If you and guys then... want to do it live, I'll hang on afterwards and uh, give you the lowdown as to how it works. But you'll see that we do it interactively, and uh, we start with vacation. Do you want to put the link in in here, and anybody who wants to can uh, grab that link? Yeah. Hold on one sec. I'll come on live. That'd be great. Appreciate that. Anybody using Bello out there? I have for since February. You like it? You really have to work it. It's awesome. It's expensive. But if you don't work it, um, I'd be happy to take it offline or do it on a session next week. But it's a great system, but I find that absolutely no one uses it well. It's all comes from your database, right? It does. Yeah, they, don't, they don't give you the leads. The leads come from your own database. But can I put in perspective? In my, I have 19,500 people in fellow. 540 people listed without me in my database. Wow. $7.5 million in gross commission. Makes me nauseous. So it's not really worth it. So no, it, it is. If you have a database and you've got around 10,000 people in it, 7% are going to transact with or without you. It's yeah, guaranteed. You big, like the numbers speak. You need a big database. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I put it up there. All right, I'm I'm going to have it in my, uh, I can text it to anybody that wants it as well. I have it in my text now. Yeah, awesome. I, didn't, I didn't see it. So where, where's it at? In the chat. And that's at 4.30, right, right Glenn? Correct, 4.30. So text me if you don't get it. And um, I, I got to uh, try to stay more consistent with keeping you out of here at 9 o'clock. Some of you have uh, other meetings and commitments. But Glenn, every, Alex, everybody, thank you, uh, David, for your contribution. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.